So I read 100 books a year. Well, actually last year in 2023, it was 98 books, but I wanna help you to read more books. I think it's really important. If you look at really successful people, they're all readers for the most part. Warren Buffett, Mark Cuban, Oprah Winfrey, these people read hours a day, and these are some of the busiest, most valuable people, you know, high net worth people in the world, and they take hours a day to read. Is it just a hobby or is there more to it? I'm going to tell you that there is way more to it. It begins to change who you are as a person. You become somebody who learns, you become a more interesting person. And so I'm going to get into my secrets of how to read more, why you should read more. And if you're watching this video, you're probably already interested. So I'll get into this, the secrets of how I do it. And uh, so let's go ahead and jump in, go ahead and smash that like button. I'd love to see in a comment below what your goal is for 2024. Let's jump in. All right, so quick introduction. My name is Bronson Hill. I'm CEO of Bronson Equity. We are a private equity group that helps people with passive income to get make money while they sleep through things like real estate and other alternative assets like car washes and ATM machines. So if you're interested in that, check out the link below, bronsonequity.com, and hit click the join button and we can set up a relationship with you to hear tell you about these awesome deals we're doing. Um, so let's jump in here. Why read more books? Well, there's three reasons why I would say why you should read more books. The first one, it makes you a more relatable person. You're the most interesting person in the room because you know something about a lot of different topics. You'll meet people from different, different places of the world. You'll talk, you'll be able to kind of share something that relates and is awesome when you have something to share. Like, oh, I read this book and this is what I learned. And I find myself doing that in conversation and people are interested to learn about that. They're interested to hear what I have to say because I'm reading a lot. So if you're a reader, you're going to have much more interesting things to say. People are going to find ways to relate to you because of what you have to share. The second thing is it makes connect connections easier, meaning uh, connecting ideas to each other. Uh, the more I read, the more I learn, the more I go through life, the more I learn that something happening today in politics is simpler, similar to something that happened a long time ago in politics or something that happens in my business is something that's similar to happen in this book or something in my family or even business relates to family. So all this stuff, as you read in different areas, there's these connections you're gonna make and you're gonna find that, you know, again, really successful people, they'll find ways to draw connections uh, one to another. One example of this is in politics, right? If there's qualities of somebody who's a leader, you're gonna be able to see those qualities based on what you'd observed in individuals, but also maybe what you've learned from books and maybe other personalities that are not in politics or that are, that are from a different era, right? So you can make those connections and say, well, how did it turn out in this particular historical person with this person who has similar traits to Donald Trump or Joe Biden, right? You can actually see that in history. And so nothing's really new. It's just something that we can uh, find a way to make those connections. Uh, the third thing is that you're growing. You're growing. It's like physical training. I do my physical training. I run. I take care of my body, um, which is great. But also, um, this is mental training. This is like the mental aerobics you're doing to get yourself in better shape. So when you meet somebody who's in, the, in the 90 or even 100 and they're super sharp, it's an amazing thing, right? Because their mind is super fit. And so actually, there's a side note, when they uh, did a, a, an autopsy on, on Albert Einstein, they found that his brain was unremarkable, except that he had all this extra like gray matter or this, and they've, now they know that that kind of gray matter is just these different connections and ideas that he was thinking through and constantly kind of working through different things. And so those are things that allow you to continue to grow. So I encourage you to grow. Um, now, I want to share these three secrets with you. Um, I think they're really going to help you. They're from my book, uh, Fire Yourself, which is right behind me here. You can get it at Amazon. It's also on my website, the first chapter for free. Um, but the first thing you can do is set an annual goal. Uh, first time I did this, I think my goal was 50 books. It was in 2020. And I ended up reading 87 books, which was awesome, right? I read way more than I thought I was going to read because I had a little more time, which remember with COVID, you kind of, they said either through COVID, you either become an alcoholic or you have some new hobby or do something else. So I just kind of really went into books, tried to, lean, to, to learn more. Uh, last year in 2023, my goal was 80 books and I read 98 books. So I didn't get to 100, but I, I read more than I had planned. So if you haven't had a goal and that sounds overwhelming, start with 20 bucks a year, 25 bucks a year. 25 bucks a year would be about a book every two weeks. It's very, very doable, right? But again, you make the goal, you keep it in front of you, you set it and you um, you do it. And again, I don't pick uh, 1,000 page books typically. I've done a couple of those this last year, but most of them are two, 300 page books, right? So don't pick books that are, uh, are super long. Make it a competition with yourself. And so that way when you start adding things to your list and you can see my list here, um, you know, I'm kind of nerdy with this. I put things on a list when I read it and you can see as we scroll down just what that looks like. You can see, you know, if I, if I highlight or bold something, that means typically it's very interesting. So you'll have your own list. You'll put things on there and it kind of make it a competition with yourself. Oh, I read this book, I got this done, this is great. And then the second secret that I have is work it into your day, right? It's not like you're going to just take all this time off and go read a book. Try to just work it into your lifestyle. I'm a busy person. I'm sure you are as well. Um, 
work it in your day. Because if you can just find a way to, you know, work it in your day where, you know, for me, I take 15 minutes at the end of the night, actually right next door to me here, I have, um, let's see if I can do this here. But over here, you can see this is my massage chair right there. And that's where I sit and do a lot of my reading, right? Is I will sit over there and read and I'll just do like 15 minutes a night, right? And I think that that's an awesome way to really um, invest in yourself is, is to do that. So uh, another thing I, I do is I do a lot of audiobooks. A lot of people say, oh, audiobooks, you know, Bronson, those don't count. Like, don't be cheesy. You know, you're not going to retain it. It's like, I actually do retain pretty well. I've trained myself. I actually think of it like a person speaking to me and I can retain pretty well. So I do a lot of audiobooks and I also speed them up uh, typically two to three times as fast. And you say, well, how could you do that? It's just, and if you ever tried it, if, you, if you're new to it, it can feel a little stressful and you're kind of like, oh my gosh, this feels like really stressful kind of trying to do this. But what happens is over time, if you go a little too fast, then just slow it down just a little bit and you'll find what's comfortable for you. Now, you can still go at normal speed or a little bit faster. A lot of times they read books very slowly. And so even if you speed up to you know, a little bit 1.2 or 1.5, that can make it, you know, it's a little more digestible. But it allows you also, and so, uh, you know, a five hour book, sometimes I can get done in a couple hours, which is amazing, right? So I'm able to kind of speed that up and be able to uh, get more done in a short amount of time. And while I do this, I do this while walking outside. I do it when I'm in the car, I do it when I'm on a run, I do it when I'm cleaning the house, I do it when I'm at the airport, I stick an earbud in. And it's just an awesome way to be able to keep learning while you're doing something else. That's what I love about audiobooks, it allows you to do it. So schedule time for that as well. Um, there's a couple things I do too with audiobooks, a little hack here. I don't like spending $15 per audiobook for Audible, obviously I could, but I don't like to commit to, uh, maybe I have commitment issues, but I don't like to commit to um, reading a whole audiobook. If I get into it, I just like the voice is not good, or I just don't like the way the books goes. You know, I, I actually start a lot more books than I finish. And so I have these apps that are typically through my local library called Hoopla. Another one is called Libby. And these are books, you check with your local library, they may have an app and you can just download all these books for free. So I'll download until it's five, 10 books a week. I don't get to many of them, but I'll at least download them and I'll kind of say, oh, this looks interesting. And I'll pick it up, oh, this is really great. Or yeah, I just don't really like this one. And it just makes my commitment low to have to try to finish that book, right? If I paid, you know, bought all these books on Audible, then I feel like I have to finish them. One of the secrets is not feeling like you have to, uh, you can kind of get things for free and keep your stream going. You get most books for free. Uh, some books you do need to buy, but it's just nice to be able to have just this unlimited stream of books available. I think Spotify Premium now has a bunch of audiobooks there too as well. So there's different ways to get books. I like when they're free because then you're not committed to finishing them, right? You didn't pay money to actually have to do it. And then feel like, oh man, I just gave 15 bucks because I didn't finish this. Um, the final thing I would say for this is give yourself a reward, right? Make it a competition. Give yourself a reward if you get there. Education is important. And that's why when you're investing, the quote behind me here is invest in yourself, right? Are you investing in yourself? This should be like a part-time job, right? That I have my job that I go and make money with or I invest in my family, whatever. But investing in yourself, it's so, so, so valuable. So when you achieve that goal, do something nice for yourself, you know, go out to dinner, uh, you know, take your spouse out to dinner or your kids, uh, get a massage, go on a trip, do something that's like, hey, this is a big deal. And I'm selling and talk about it. Tell others you're doing, this is what I'm doing. And on one hand, you may feel a little self-conscious to do that. But first of all, people will be impressed that you had a goal, that you, you met your goal, whether it's 20 bucks or 120 bucks, that you did that. And then also it will give you pride in yourself that you're somebody who who makes goals and achieves them. And also you're somebody who's a reader and invests in yourself. So I encourage you to do that, really go out for it. So in summary, uh, biggest thing is make a goal. I'm a big goals person, but with reading, you have to, uh, for me, this has worked is to make a goal. You might have another way, but keep track of what you're doing, uh, measure what matters. You know, I lost 30 pounds five or six years ago because I started weighing myself every morning. And really that was probably the biggest thing. I just started to become aware that, oh, this is how much I weigh, this is where I'm at. And that was very, very helpful for me, just getting more information. So measure it, keep track of it, be really valuable, work it into your day and the set of rewards. I hope that really helps you on the path to get where you wanna go. This is one of my favorite quotes of all time. It's about this topic and it's from Charlie Tremendous Jones. It says, you will be the same person in five years uh, as you are today, except for the people you meet and the books you read, right? You're going to be that the years just go by. I find myself now catching myself that, hey, you know, 20 years ago, this, this, and this happened, or this other. Th and I just realized, you know, every single year goes by very, very fast. And this is a phenomenon that happens as we get older, right? And I don't know, you know, whether you're 20 or you're 85, you know, you, it's just the, the time goes very quickly. So what you're investing in yourself is really what you carry with you. So encourage you to do it. Uh, if you haven't checked out uh, some of the other videos in this channel, we've got this one about networking. So this video talks about um, networking. So that the quote was about education and networking, uh, the people that you meet and your life can change if you meet the right people. So this is a great video to watch after this video 
kind of another way to invest in yourself is to network. So check out that video up here. And then if you haven't checked out my book, um, which is behind me called Fire Yourself, we have the first chapter for free on my website at bronsonequity.com. Go download that, that book. You can uh, get the first chapter and then you can, if you want to purchase it on Amazon, I uh, encourage you to go check it out. But uh, thanks for taking the time to educate yourself. I look forward to seeing you on the next video.